Hey everyone, dive in. Today we're going deep on a topic that hits close to home for some urological ostomies. It's a big one, for sure. We're talking about those procedures where sometimes there's just no way around it and the bladder has to go. But what then? Right, you'd think, what happens next? You don't have a bladder, how do you... Exactly. And that's where the ingenuity of surgery comes in urostomies and neobladders. Two ways to tackle the same problem. Both help you get rid of urine. Totally different approaches, though. One's continuous, and the other, well, you kind of have to relearn going. Yeah, it's wild. So buckle up. We're about to explore the science, the recovery, and the everyday reality of life with a urostomy or a neobladder. Let's get into it. Starting with you, actually. What's the deal with a urostomy? So picture this. A urostomy uses a small piece of your intestine surge. Surgeons are incredible, by the way. They really are. They create a new path for urine to leave your body bypassing the bladder entirely. This opening, called a stoma, stoma, okay, connects straight from the kidneys, meaning no control over the flow. Constantly. Yeah. So I mentioned there are some big changes to get used to with that. What's the surgery and the recovery like? It's a pretty big surgery, four or five hours on the table. Then you're looking at a week, sometimes 10 days, recovering in the hospital. Makes sense. And like with any surgery, there can be complications. Skin irritation around the stoma is pretty common. Oh, really? Almost like, a, think of it like a little blister. We call these granulomas. Granulomas. Sounds a little scary, not gonna lie. Nah, not as bad as it sounds. Usually it just means the skin's irritated. Maybe some leakage, maybe the appliance isn't fitting quite right. Right. Good news is there are things to help with that. Protect the skin, make things more comfy. That's good to know. Mm. Now, how does the neobladder surgery compare to this? Seems like a totally different ball game. Oh yeah, night and day. With a neobladder, we use a bigger section of the intestine to make a pouch that actually works like a bladder. Wow. It's a longer surgery though, more like five, six hours. Recovery at the start is similar to a urostomy, but then... The retraining, that's what I'm curious about. What does that actually involve? Think of it like learning to use a muscle you never had before. Oh, wow. It takes dedication, lots of practice. We're talking months of exercises, kegels to strengthen those pelvic floor muscles, plus timed voiding to reconnect the brain and the, well, new bladder. That's incredible. It shows how amazing the body is, right? But it sounds like no matter which way you go, urostomy or neobladder, there are challenges. That's the thing. Both come with their own risks. One thing that surprises a lot of people is that both increase the chance of UTIs. UTIs? Really? Why is that? Whenever you change how urine flows naturally, it's easier for bacteria to, you know, sneak into the urinary tract. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Just means you really got to be on top of hygiene and follow-up care. Speaking of care, what about just everyday life? What kind of adjustments are we talking about? A big one, especially with a urostomy, is stoma care. But honestly, it's not as overwhelming as it might sound. What's a routine like? Basically, just keep it clean, keep it dry, wash it every day with mild soap and water, pat it dry gently. And you know what? Baths are totally fine. Oh, good to know. What about clothes? Do you have to change your wardrobe? Some people do. Loose-fitting clothes are often easier. Some people adjust their underwear. It's all about finding what's comfy for you. And um, this might be a little personal, but what about intimacy? How do these procedures affect that part of life? It's a big deal, and we can't ignore it. It impacts men and women, both physically and emotionally. That's got to be tough. It is. But the important thing to remember is that you're not alone. Lots of hospitals have these amazing psychological support teams, people who get it, you know? Yeah. Don't be afraid to reach out. Such a crucial thing to remember. These are major changes, and it's okay to ask for help. Mm. And, you know, thinking about all this, the surgery, the support, it really makes you wonder what the future holds for urological conditions. Right. What amazing advancements are just around the corner. That's something to think about. For sure. Thanks for diving into this with us.